Choosing colors for UI design is hard, and color theory terms like triadic and monochromatic and analogous never really clicked for me, nor did it help me when it came time to code my colors. And sure, there are plugins and color pickers and color tools that you can use, but that still takes a pretty long time. I wanted to just be able to jump into my design app and choose perfect color palettes by hand. So I spent a few years studying color, color theory in traditional art and graphic design, color models, color systems, and color codes. From this, I created a technique that allows absolutely anyone to choose perfectly balanced color palettes every single time using numbers. It revolves around two things, the HSB color model and my color family categories. Now, when we're designing in something like Figma, we're usually choosing a hex code. That's a hexadecimal code that correlates to a color. When coding designs, it's common for devs to use hex codes or RGBA, where the A just stands for the opacity of the color. It's common to use either color code, either hex or RGBA. Devs will choose hex when they just wanna make it easy and copy and paste one single color code, or they might choose RGBA because they want more control over the color's opacity. Either one is fine and you can decide which one you'd like to use depending on how much control you want and you can even mix and match and use both of them together. But there's still the matter at hand of how to create a well-balanced color palette that you can then translate to code. Hex codes are actually just a shorthand for RGBA. There is a little bit of mathematical conversion involved but our design apps can do that work for us. Then we have the HSB color model, and this is the one we're going to be focusing on. HSB stands for hue, saturation, and brightness. Hue, which is all of the colors in the color wheel, saturation, which is how dull or rich the color is, and brightness, whether that color is closer to white or closer to black on the color spectrum. This gives us the ability to manipulate the colors based on a few different variables, so we can choose colors easily that also translate to color codes. Here inside of Figma, if we open up our color picker, we can see that there is a spectrum of color here. And as we slide our color picker from left to right and right to left, what we're seeing is a change of hue. Now, normally what we would do here is change the hex in order to change the hue or the color. So we might select a swatch to change the hex or just type in a hex code like this. But the real magic happens when you change the color model. In Figma, if you click on this little drop down arrow next to hex, you'll see the other color models. You'll see RGB, HSL, and HSB. If you select HSB, you'll see some new variables come up. The first one stands for hue, the second one is saturation, and the third is brightness. Now, hue can be thought of the same way we think of hex. It's a number that represents a color. Saturation, on the other hand, tells us how rich or dull the color is. And on the color spectrum, that depends on how close you are moving to gray or how far you are moving away from gray. When we are at zero, that color is all gray. We've added gray to it or we've taken out all of the richness of color. When we move to 100, we are adding 100% of that color or 100% pigment of that color. So it's as rich as we can get. The final value is brightness, and that refers to how much white or black is added to that color. So in this color spectrum, when we go up, we're adding white, and therefore we're perceiving this color as brighter. And as we go down, we're adding more black, we're getting closer to black on the color spectrum, and therefore our eyes perceive this as darker. So just to recap, if you go closer to gray, you're getting a duller saturation of color. And as you go closer to the right side and you add more color, it's getting richer and richer. And that is the saturation line. As you go up, you're getting brighter and brighter by adding more white to the color. And as you go down and closer to black, it's getting darker. Now, when we move this slider, the hue number changes, but saturation and brightness stay the same. So the key to applying this to creating a color palette is to just start with some swatches and select the first one and choose any hue that you want. So we're gonna go to fill here and we're gonna make sure that the color model is set to HSB. And then I'm just gonna drag my color spectrum handle and choose any hue that I want. So for this one, the hue is 284, the saturation is 65, and the brightness is 75. We wanna to move to the next swatch 
and then choose that exact same color. Now, without touching the saturation or the brightness, we just want to change the hue. So you can move your color slider anywhere that you want. And let's just go into this blue range. Now we can do the same thing and continue with all of our swatches. So we're gonna select our third swatch and you can select the first color or the second color. It doesn't matter because they have the same saturation and brightness levels, but you want to change this hue again. And as long as you keep doing that every time, only changing the hue, you're going to end up with a perfectly balanced color palette. But what about the saturation and brightness? When do we tweak those and how do we make different color palettes that match our brand? What I discovered is that there is a safe range of saturation and brightness for every color category. I've derived these color categories simply by grouping together these colors that share similar attributes and look and feel. By following these ranges, you'll be able to pick colors that always match and go with your branding. The first category is jeweled tones. The second is pastel tones. Category three is earth tone. Category four is neutral tones. Category five is fluorescent tones. And finally, category six are the shades. So for jewel tones, the safe saturation range is between 73 and 83, and the safe brightness range is between 56 and 76. So on the low end, you're going to have a saturation of 73. So on the low end, you're gonna have a saturation of 73 and a brightness of 56. The hue can be anything that you want. And on the high end, you'll have a saturation of 83 and a brightness of 76. And you can have any saturation or brightness value in between those two ranges. So if you see here, the hue changes in each one of these, but the saturation stays between the safe ranges. And it's the same thing over here on the high end. As long as you stay between these two safe ranges, you're going to have a jewel tone color palette that is always perfectly balanced. Moving on to pastel, you'll see the same thing. The safe ranges are here. You can pause this video or rewind it and screenshot these if you'd like, or to make it super easy, you can download this Figma color sheet with all of these safe ranges in the link in the description. So as you can see, again, the saturation range stays between 14 and 89 in the low end and between 21 and 96 in the high end. Then we have earth tones. These are a little bit more organic and a little bit more dull. So you can see that saturation has a lot more gray mixed in. And then down here, it's also lower in the brightness. We have our neutral tones, which will which you'll need a lot of these in UI design to create elevation and different cards and different depths on your components. We've got the fluorescent tones, which are really great for dark design because the color really comes off the page and these have a pretty high saturation range. So we're just dragging that color picker all the way over into this deep side of the color spectrum. And then finally, we have our two shades of black and white. So you can download this full cheat sheet and it shows you exactly how to change your color model how to view the formulas, how to input the numbers, and how to generate these colors perfectly balanced. Did you know that I teach a course on product design? And it's one of the top rated and most comprehensive design courses of its kind. And you'll learn all about doing research and UI and visual design, how to create design systems and color scales, and lots of other things that will make you a very confident and high valued designer. I would love for you to join us and you can learn more about it in the link in the description. Okay, back to the video. So now you can take your perfect color palette and you can apply it to your UI designs and feel confident that everything will match. You can open up your color picker, you can change the color model and copy and paste whatever values you need to code your designs or give to your developers.